your book to the page. I'm watching the movie, bro. We're going to watch the movie after we finish this. Page 698. Okay. This is, listen, my turn. This is the evolutionary tree of animals. It shows the order in which animals evolve and all the different group names, all the different phylum names. You're going to have to know all these phylum names. We're going to spend a day on each of the phylums, or maybe two or, or three days. If you're fun of. For Cordata, we spend weeks. So sponges came first, then cnidarians, those are like jellyfish and sea anemones. I love jellyfish and sea anemones. Then flatworms like planarians, I'll show you what those are. Also tapeworms. Then roundworms, if your dog has ever had heartworms, or hookworms or something like that, those are roundworms. Rotifer is a little water animal you probably haven't heard of. Jay's rotor. Mollusks include snails and octopus and squid. Mollusks? Mollusks. Mollusks. <laughs> Annelids, okay, let's not make a comment about everything. Annelids include earthworms and leeches. Arthropod include uh, insects and spiders and crabs and lobsters, crayfish, shrimp. Echinoderms are starfish and sea urchins. And chordates include fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Now, there's a certain type of development that occurs at each stage that separates each group. And we're going to learn about that all through our study here. All animals are multicellular, but the sponges evolved with no true tissues. And we'll study what that means when we get to sponges. Later, tissues evolved. And then there was a, organisms that had what we call radial symmetry and organisms that have what we call bilateral symmetry. The ones with radial symmetry are the cnidarians. I'll tell you what radial symmetry means in a minute. All the other things have bilateral symmetry. We have bilateral symmetry. I'll tell you what that means in a minute. The later groups are divided into acelomates, pseudocelomates, and coelomates, which I'll tell you what that means in a minute. But a coelom is a body cavity, and flatworms don't have any body cavity. Roundworms and rotifers have a sort of a body cavity, which is pseudocelum, and everything else has a coelum, a true body cavity. It's a body cavity. I'm going to show you. A body like cavity is a space. Like a space for organs. A big space for organs in the body. Like a root cage? No, it's spaces. No, no. no I'm saying. So we're going to learn all about this. Listen, we're going to learn all about this. As we go through, I'm going to revisit all these words. I want to talk about a few of them in advance. And the first thing is the symmetry. Symmetry is the ability to cut something in half and have the two halves be equal. It's me right here. A pizza has symmetry. You slice it down the middle, you get two equal halves, more or less. A pizza has what's called radial symmetry, though, because you can turn it Whatever way you want, as long as you go down the middle, you're going to get equal halves. Not necessarily. Jellyfish have the same sort of symmetry. It doesn't matter which way you turn a jellyfish, as long as you cut it down the middle, you're going to get equal halves. <coughs> Sponges don't have any symmetry at all. We call that asymmetric. A means none. No symmetry. It doesn't matter where you cut a sponge, you're not going to get equal halves. The, the way they're built is all weird. <laughs> Bilateral symmetry is what, what 
the higher organisms have what we have, what birds have, fish. You cut them. There's only one way you can cut them to get equal halves. Right down the middle. You cut us any other way, you're not going to get equal halves. So we call that bilateral symmetry. And organisms with bilateral symmetry have what we call a left half and a right half. And you'll have to know these words. Anterior means toward the front. Posterior means towards the back. Dorsal, I'm sorry, posterior means towards the rear. Dorsal means towards the back. You've heard of a dorsal fin on a shark? No. No, sir. Yes. That's my shark impression. Ventral means towards the front, towards the stomach. You got to know those words. Dorsal, ventral, anterior, posterior. Let's see a symmetry video. Yeah. Let's see this. Oh, we haven't seen a stupid video in a while. We'll get to some. Quiet, please. It's an important evolutionary feature. There are different types of symmetry in the bodies of animals and in the arrangement of flower parts. One type, called radial symmetry, is found in shapes that are arranged around a central point, like the spokes of a wheel. Such an object can be rotated and still look the same. A radially symmetric shape can be bisected in many planes and yield mirror image halves. Primitive animal phyla, such as cnidaria, display radial symmetry. A second type is bilateral symmetry. A bilaterally symmetric object can only be bisected in one plane to yield mirror image halves. We can refer to such objects as having right and left halves. Most animals are bilaterally symmetric. Okay, some animals show what's called cephalization. Ceph the cephalic region, that's the head region. And cephalization is having a head, having nervous tissue like a brain in the head region. You think, well, God, all, all animals have heads. They don't. Think about a jellyfish. Jellyfish doesn't have a head. Sponge doesn't have a head. Frogs do. So frogs show cephalization, and jellyfish do not. Jellyfish have a bottom, so wouldn't the top be the head? would be the top. What about a worm? Some worms show, show some cephalization, and other worms don't show as much. Now let's talk about coelom. A coelom is an open space. And here we show if you were to take a, an earthworm and do a cross-section of it, a cross-section is when you take a tube and you cut down through it and then look, look inside of it. So what they've done is they've cut here, and then they've looked down inside the cut. And that's what you see. And what you see is a layer of ectoderm on the outside. Ectoderm is the blue. The red cells are mesoderm. That's the middle layer. And you can see red there. And then endoderm on the inside. That's the tan layer. But you see a space. Do you see that space? Yeah. An open space. An open space within the mesoderm. That space is completely surrounded by mesoderm. Mesoderm's on all sides of the space. That's a coelom. Is that why a coelom is a space within the mesoderm. Is that why when you squeeze a uh, squeeze a worm, uh, water from it? Absolutely. Oh, why would that be? Fluid filled cavity. Well, yeah. If you were to puncture the cavity, you would get water would come out. Of it. <laughs> you, have to a a you have to puncture it though. Water oh. That's true. My dad ate a now look at the difference here. This is a pseudocelum. A pseudocelum means a false body cavity. Look, you have ectoderm on the outside. It's not surrounded by Then you have mesoderm, and then you have the pseudocelum, and then you have the endoderm. But look at the difference between the two. There's the the true body cavity, and there's the false body cavity. Can you see the difference? Yes. Look at the two of them. Yeah. This one has mesoderm on both sides of the body cavity. 
I'm sorry. No, no, the other one does. This one has mesoderm on both sides of the body cavity, and the pseudocelum has mesoderm only on one side. The other side is endoderm. So that's basically the difference. Round worms, like heartworms, again, that your dog can get, have pseudocelums. Uh, we and earthworms and more, the more advanced animals have true coelums. Yes? You can remember that because pseudonym is like a pen name and pseudonym is like not actual name. Pseudo means false. Yeah, exactly. Pseudo means false. So it's a false coelum. Now there's another type. Here's an acelomate. This is called a flatworm and if you cut a flatworm and look, ectoderm on the outside, mesoderm in the middle, Endoderm on the inside, guess what? No body cavity. There's no space anywhere. If it has all three cell layers but no space in there, it's a acelomate. A means no. No coelom. Flatworms have that. An example of a flatworm is a tapeworm. I don't know if you've ever heard of those. Yeah. Oh. We're going to spend the day discussing tapeworms. It'll be fun. Gross. You get them <laughs> yeah, you can get them inside yourself. <laughs> Say what? Yeah, <laughs> Now, protostomes and deuterostomes. These are a couple words we'll use. And it refers back to this, what I talked about yesterday. Remember this um, gastrula? Oh, yeah. And there was a hole here. Then I'm sticking my finger in, oh, yes. and the hole will be either the mouth or the anus. Anus. Okay, if the hole forms the mouth, the organism is known as a protostome. Proto means mouth first. If the hole becomes the anus, that's called a deuterostome. That means mouth second. And you can remember it by doo-doo. Deutero stone. Is that what I call it? <laughs> no, deutero deuter, deuter, means second. Yeah. Mouth second. Deutero stone yeah. means mouth second. Why do they call it doo doo? Because doo doo, number two, get it? <laughs> I don't know why they call it doo doo. Uh, yeah, I think Drew's got a point. There. Video footage. <laughs> the coelom branch subdivides into protostome or deuterostome animals. <laughs> During protostome development, the final outcome of each cell cannot be altered. If one cell is changed, the embryo will not develop normally. Quiet Cells place. can be altered in the developmental stage of deuterostomes. <coughs> Another difference is in the cell alignment. At the eight cell stage, four of the protostome cells are offset, which gives a spiral appearance. Deuterostome cells align. The blastula forms in both types of development. Changes occur, however, in the location of the mesoderm. The protostome mesoderm is located near the gut of the embryo. The mesoderm of a deuterostome forms two pouches in the endoderm opposite the gut. As the embryo continues to develop, the mesoderm of the protostome splits and forms a coelom. In the deuterostomes, the coelom forms from the pouches of mesoderm that separate from the gut. The blastopore, an opening in the gastrula, forms the mouth in a protostome and the anus in a deuterostome. That was a great video. <laughs> now he said a lot there. There's actually a lot of differences between protostomes and deuterostomes. And they're mentioned in the chart on page 703. So there are some other differences. The way the cells line up with each other. The way the, the, way the mesoderm forms is different. But the main difference is... The mouth and anus, that's the main one I want you to know about. Yes? In the end of that video, it showed like the blastula like splitting. The, are we going to learn about that? Or it, lo it looked like the... Uh, um, the what that was, the was just like the showing, showing the tube going all the way through. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. In actuality, it comes around so it's kind of like a donut. Oh, okay. It's the, the tube, there's a hole on one side and then the hole ends up forming on the other side okay. too. So there's a tube going all the way through. Right. Just like the tube that goes all the way through you. Okay, okay so you are to read section 24.2, page 698 through 7. Oh, wait, I forgot one other thing. Segmentation. 708? 
Segment. I forgot segmentation. No, right? One last movie. thing. Just watch that movie. Yeah. Segmentation. Segmentation is the the uh, some of the higher animals have segmented bodies. We do too. Segments are repeated units. And you see that in a segmented worm or in a, in a uh, arthropod there, that's a, a, like a centipede or a millipede, that's a millipede. You can see it in us. See how we have segments? What about like a scorpion or something? Scorpions, you can see the segments too. And so segmentation evolved to allow organisms to get bigger. One of the ways you can have an organism grow big is just to take a single unit like that and repeat it over and over and over again. So you don't have to come up with a whole bunch of new instructions for making each piece. You just copy the same instructions over and over. And so organisms got to be segmented and they grew very large. Also, you can armor each segment and protect the organism that way. So if we go back to see this, take a look one more time. Multicellularity evolves. Some of the animals don't have tissues like sponges, but some do. Of the ones that had tissues, some were radial, cnidarians, jellyfish, and some were bilaterally symmetric, all the other organisms. Some of those were acelomates with no body cavity. The rest of them had a body cavity. The flatworms didn't. Some of them were pseudocelomates, the round worms and rotifers. They had the pseudocelum. And the rest of them have a coelom. Of the ones that had a coelom, some were protostomes. The mollusks, annelids, arthropods developed mouth first. And some were deuterostomes, the echinoderms and chordates. And the annelids and arthropods developed segmentation, and so did the chordates. Segmentation evolved later. So that should explain the whole table and how different animals are divided. Did yes. You say that chordates are like mammals, reptiles, fish, are you? Fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Those are the chordates. I saw a hummingbird. Yeah, that's that's the chordate. It's not a hummingbird. There's loads of a bird. Okay, so you read 24.2 tonight, and we're going to finish the video. Will us out.